see one of the bees with the pollen on the leg. It's normally it's an orange pollen and that tells that it's coming from one of the, um, the flowers then. Welcome back to another episode guys. So today we're, we're going to be doing, we're going to be walking through to the apiary. We're going to be looking at the entrances and then based on what we're seeing at the entrances to give a certain indication of what is taking place inside of the box. We want to know whether or not that box is queen right, if she's lame, if the box has honey and um, if there's any other behavior to note in that box. So come on let's get the episode started typically um, at an entrance you're gonna see a lot of activities bees going and coming and um, just by that set of traffic there that gives can give you an indication of what's really taking place inside of the box now um, we're gonna be starting with the most important thing or the first thing that you really want to pay attention to before having um, before looking for anything else and what you want to look for is pollen now um if you're not aware bees will take pollen and um, pollen is the protein source of the hive and they take that in on the hind leg now if you look closely i'm gonna pan in a little bit closer so you can perhaps see one of the bees with the pollen on the leg it's normally it's an orange pollen and that tells that it's coming from one of the um, the flowers then a white pollen would normally indicate something like an aki tree but if you look at this one right here you can see the pollen on, on the hind leg this one down here you can see the pollen on the hind leg now what the bees use the pollen for is to um, what they will do they will store it and mix it with nectar and that turns it into what they call a bee bread and they leave it in the cell to make it ferment and um, they use that to feed the larvae or the young bees um, in the in the hive. Now, you seeing pollen going into the box is a strong indicator that there is probably a queen in the box and a queen right um, queen. And what that means is that the queen has been mated and um, she is laying in the box. So if you are have if you have a hive and you're looking at the traffic going in and out and you're not seeing any nectar any pollen going in or out of that box probably that box is does not have a queen in it and then you should be thinking about getting um, a frame from another box that has a queen that has a day old egg you can put it in there and they'll raise their own queen out of that and i'll do an episode on queen um at making splits and doing and having the box doing raising their own queen all right, but this box in particular you're gonna see that it does have a high traffic and um, one other thing as well that you want to notice that if you look closer at this one here you realize that that bee is standing in place but he's flapping his wing is fanning what they are doing they're doing they do that in, in for two reasons they really stay at the entrance and fan for one if the entrance is too hot they want to circulate cool air so they're planning to take out the hot air out of the pan out of the, the box and the other reason that they would want to do that is that they want they do this in order to reduce the moisture content that is in the honey so what they will do they will stand over the the the, the capping or the the cell that has the wax in it the, the nectar in it and they will fan to reduce the um, the moisture content and you'll see that they do this also at the entrance of the box and that's what they do to reduce the moisture content and turn that sweet sweet nectar into delicious honey mm -hmm. all right so now moving to one of the other boxes here and this one you can realize it's the same behavior so you're looking at it you see bees fanning and you see bees coming and going now the other thing that you want to notice as well is that there are two different types of bees really going and coming if you look at this fat fat one here that bee that you're seeing there is a drone bee and that bee does not carry a stinger he's the male bee that's in the hive and this is a strong indication that the hive is becoming sexually mature and what that what i mean by that 
is that the hive is reaching to a point where they are fit to create to be swarming and by so with that said in mind so you know that this queen is not only laying workers to do work but the hive as one unit sexually matures to the point where they will create drone bees male bees to go out and um, mate with other queens or for instance if this hive is gonna split in two what is gonna happen is that the queen that is in there is gonna take half the box and um, that's half the, 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 the bees in the box and they'll fly out and go somewhere else and create a new colony and then the other half will remain in the box and they will raise a queen from what is there she normally lays um, queen cells in there so it, you know probably about two weeks but after that queen has hatched out and she goes out she's gonna go out on what they call a mating flight and that is the time that she will take to mate with other drones from other hives so that is the importance of why you're seeing the drone bees which is the bigger bees that's there now point to note as well with these kind of bees they, they don't have any stinger so you can easily pick up one and they will not sting you um, however they do consume a lot of the resources in the hive so as it gets down to the colder month like um, September October what you'll find is that the bees will go ahead and remove the drones from the hive and drag them out by the wing by the the foot the fit and they will up, get them out of the hive and the reason you will observe that behavior is because the bees um, they don't want the drones to be in the hive at certain time of the year because they do consume a lot of resources um, nectar and um, honey and um, pollen yeah they do they, they do take a lot to sustain themselves one of the other things that you you can observe as well or just a bit of information is that the drone bee that you're seeing here is the only bee that can go from one colony to the next without being attacked these are the only bees that are able to do so other worker bees from other colony can't go into this particular box here um, if they do if they try to go in what's gonna happen is that the guard bee will attack them and perhaps even sting them or kill them so right so mm -hmm. if you can see this hive is behaving the same way and this is normal behavior you will observe that they're fanning um, at the entrance and um, just taking a look to see if I'm seeing any pollen coming into this box And there you go one of them just went in with pollen a while ago so I can tell just by looking at the entrance of this box that one the queen is in there two she is laying because I'm seeing bee carrying in pollen there which is what they need for their protein source and um, yeah three they really have um, nectar in there because this one at the front of the box is fanning profusely to reduce the moisture content within the box all right so let's take another look at another hive here if you realize that the boxes as well um you can tell also a lot by um how much bees are in the box by the number of bees going or coming within a certain time frame and i'm gonna give you some perspective so this box here that you're looking at is a double brood chamber one here one here which the queen will use to raise young and then this one that i put up here we call it a super and that is where they will store honey um so looking at this box here you can see that any given time you're seeing anywhere from perhaps 10 20 bees coming or going at any given time the bigger the, the colony the more bee you will see going and coming from the box at any given point now just to show you some perspective i'm gonna move over to um a smaller colony that is about seven frame and you will see in terms of traffic the comparison of what i'm talking about here all right so come go over here Alright, so this box here that you're seeing guys, this one is a 7 framer. 
um, last time I checked they were up to about six or seven frame worth of um, B now if you look at this one here you realize that the traffic that's going in and out of the box is way less compared to the other one that we were looking at too and um, that's just an indication that this is a growing colony but it's just nowhere at the scale of um, the other colonies but just indicators as well looking at the box I can tell that there are pollens so the queen is definitely in there because I'm seeing pollen going and coming and then also I can see that they're fanning so they have some amount of honey there because at this time even though the time is very it's overcast it's not really that hot so I know they're fanning to reduce the moisture content and just to give uh, some perspective let me just move over to the neighbor that's right here and you can just tell the amount of bees that's going and coming from this light there are so many bees in this one that they full off the entrance and they're also hanging down so that's that's the number of um, bees that are in this box so that's really does put a lot of things into perspective now for this one I had to reduce the entrance of this one that's why you see the bees spanning the entire deck there and um, that was just due to the robin so they're still used to having a full um, open box to defend so that's why you see that a lot of guard bees are still at the entrance here and then the ones the foragers when they land at the regular entrance if you can follow you see that they turn and they start walking and they go into where the entrance is so bees have really good memory but they, they take a little while to adjust to changes so I had to quickly reduce the entrance and that's why you're still seeing that they're protecting everything now as soon as I observe the behavior um, going back to normal in the in the hives I'll definitely be opening up the entrances again to give them more ventilation or I think I may just go ahead and just switch them over to the um, this bottom here and that will give them more ventilation so I can still reduce the entrance and the hive will still keep a lot cooler than what it is now so um, this was just to give an idea of what to expect at the entrance if the other day when I spoke to you you would realize that if you come at the entrance and you see a lot of dead bees at the entrance and I, well I'm not even seeing any at the ground now yeah I'm not even seeing any here well there's a one or two there but um once you come at the box and you see any dead bee at the entrance and if you realize this one that I'm looking at here he died and he's let me take him up he died in the curl over his like in a fetal position then this bee died as a result of a sting so if you come at the box at the entrance and you see the bee like this and he's in this kind of position in a, in a fetal position like this then this bee died as a result of fighting and he was stung to death so you know definitely that there's robbing taking place in that particular box if it was a case where you see the bee die and he's not in the fetal position and his tongue is um, sticking out then that bee would have died as a result of either dehydration or what we would also call American fowl brood and um, yeah if you ever see your bees dying like that you really want your then you really have to get some additional help on that because American fowl brood is nothing to play around with people have lost complete apiaries because of the disease and it's not it's not good for you it's not good for me and it's definitely not good for the bees all right so that's pretty much it for for it today guys um just wanted to give you a walkthrough of what the apiary is looking like um so and a couple of things that I'm, i plan to do so again we have this lonesome box over here which is the aggressor um, and I'm, I'm not gonna really fool around that one but what I'm gonna be doing in the future I'm gonna be doing some split 
to um, increase the number of bucks in my apiary. So a couple good traits that I've identified. So this box grows really, really fast. So I like the fact that they, they're, they're able to take whatever material they have and they can expand as fast as many of the other boxes in, in the apiary. So I like the growth on this one. So I definitely want to keep to keep this genetic in my in my yard. So I'm, I'm going to be doing a split on this box. And um, also there's another box in the yard and I'm going to be doing a split on. And the, the traits that I see in that box, and let me just take you over there. We can walk over there. This one here that we're looking at, this box um, where they don't grow as fast as the other boxes, this box in particular is very good at honey. Like, even though this is a double box, I, I can say about seven full frame is in the double brood chamber and they've not really given any indication of expanding beyond that. So this is definitely a trait that I want to also keep in my apiary. So I'm going to be doing a split on this box here and um, hopefully uh, I think I'm going to take one split off this one. Perhaps either one or two split off that one. I think I might just take one split off of that one. For this particular box here that I'm looking at that has the calm and gentle nature I like that about the box however the in terms of growth they're not fast growing and um, I mean they're very cleansy and I don't have any um, varroa mite issues with them but the problem that I have with this box is growth they, they really take their time to do it so I think I'm gonna be requeening that one so I'm gonna be taking the queen out of that box and I'm going to remove him and allow them to um, create a new queen with some of the genetics that I'm seeing in perhaps this box. I think I might take a frame of um, frame of brood from this one, put into that one to make them make um, a queen out of it. And then for this box over here, this box is doing pretty well as well. The second one there, that um, super there, um, pretty much full with honey at this point so for that one i'm gonna leave that one as a double for the time being and my reason for doing that is that there in in the summer season you will have little flows that you can still get things off so i need to have a colony so i can still get a little honey during that time and um with that i'll put that back into the apiary or what i'll do i'll probably sell it to get more sugar to continue the feeding to get them into um, November and ready up for the season because all these boxes what I'm gonna be doing I'm gonna be doing three splits and I want to get them back up to a double box before um, before September I would say September October to get them back up to a double box to so prepare them for the honey flow starting in December January February and March so um, I think the next episode that I'm going to be doing, I may be taking off the excess honey off this box, this box, and um, this one has honey as well. So I'm going to be taking the honey off those boxes, and then I'll also be doing a split. And uh, yeah, um, requeen, split, and split. So I'll take you through the whole process of how we do that. How you take one colony, split it into two what you need for that and then um hopefully everything works out and um we're gonna be having three new members um in our apiary and then from that as it goes down more into the season i'll perhaps go ahead and then split that box into either two or three because i like the trait of that one as well and then i'll split that one over there into two or three or mm -hmm. as well because i really want to get it up to um to 14 bucks in total for the new for the um for the new season but i can only spit about 30 percent of my colony i try to spit 25 to 30 percent of my boxes at a time just in case i run into any problems with um them not making any queen i can still get eggs from the other boxes to give them so they can raise a new queen out of that all right guys so that's it for the episode today and um as well just stay tuned we have more content like comment and subscribe if you like what we're doing 
and um, if you have any pointers as well um, you can let us know if you think that I'm doing something wrong I'm always open to learning new things I'm a new beekeeper and um, always appreciate um, new knowledge so stay tuned guys have a good one all right bye bye